Bless you, Sister Freeman. Amen. We welcome each of you to the call, to this time of encouragement, trusting that all is well with each of you. family and friends as I see you coming in good evening to you welcome to our time of encouraging words for discouraging times and the conclusion of 12 ways for listening to God's voice amen 12 ways for listening to God's voice we'll conclude that tonight and then we will we will raise up some some very practical Penny tools. Penny. God bless you, Sister Penny. Some practical tools of praying through, not just praying about and not praying for, but praying through with victory. Amen. God bless you, Sister Norfleet, Brother Deacon Drayton. God bless you, Sister Gail, Sister Burrow Jones. God bless you, Deborah Gomes. Good evening to all of you. Uh, thank you. We appreciate you calling Sister us your beautiful Taylor. family. God bless you. Taylor, bless you. Sister Mary McClendon, God bless you. God bless you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. God bless you. <clears throat> Brother Basharan, bless your heart. Good to see you. We thank God for each. Ellen Davis. Hey, Sister Davis, God bless you. Sister Valerie James, Brother Frank James, God bless you. Tawana Washington, Brother Ronnie McClendon. Good evening to you all. Amen. Good evening, Sister Donna Harrison. We praise the Lord for each of you. Amen. Naressa? Hello, Dr. Naressa Williams. Good evening. Good evening, Pastor. How are you tonight? I'm well. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hey, it's Sister Twyla Bolden. God bless you, Twyla. Thank you for joining. Hey, Donna McKnight. God bless you, my dear. Deacon Ken and Deacon Simonetta, right? God bless you all. Hello, Sister Iris Cooper. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Well, it's Wednesday night hump day. We are making it over, making it through, as they would say. And we are grateful and we are thankful. And we give God the glory, God the honor, and God the praise for bringing us thus far along the way. Let's open up with a word of prayer. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Lord, we are so thankful and we are so grateful that you have proven yourself over and over and over again. You shower us with your mercies, which are unlimited and new every morning. And great is your faithfulness toward us. And then, Lord, we are thankful for your grace, which is sufficient. And we thank you that it is more than enough for our lives and for that we say thank you. We acknowledge your holiness, your righteousness, your sovereignty, your providence, and we thank you for being all that we need. And so we bless your name and Lord, we confess that we've fallen short of your glory, but we thank you for forgiveness and watching us clean and cleansing us from all sin. Thank you, Lord, for a solid foundation, a firm foundation of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Now I pray, Holy Father, that you would speak to us through your word as we learn to hear and to listen 
to your voice. We pray that you'll open our eyes that we might behold wondrous things from your word and warm our hearts with your spirit's power as we hear from you tonight. And we'll be so careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. And we thank you for it in the marvelous name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. Good to see you all still coming in. Sister Alicia, God bless you. Sister Janice Mukes Watson, God bless you. Thank God for all of you coming in. And so we have gone through 10 of the 12 ways to listen for God's voice. 12 ways to listen for God's voice. Our text is uh, 1 Samuel 3. Uh, the heart of it is really 4 through 10, but we read, we read all of the passage because it helps to give us a context. Hey, good evening, Brother Carlton and Sister Edith Rambo. God bless you. Thank you for that warm greeting to my family. <clears throat> and so, as we read the text, and we remind you what the text is, and we'll read it one more time tonight uh, for, for some more insight, illumination, inspiration, and revelation. Uh, and then we'll, we'll then cover what we've covered, and then we'll add the other two tonight. And so the text is 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. The Christian Standard Bible says, The boy Samuel served the Lord in Eli's presence. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare and prophetic visions were not widespread. One day, Eli, whose eyesight was failing, was lying in God his usual place. God bless you, sister. Before the lamp of God had gone out, Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was located. Then the Lord called Samuel and he answered, Here I am. He ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. I didn't call, Eli replied. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Once again, the Lord called Samuel. Samuel got up, went to Eli, and said, Here I am, you called me. I didn't call you, my son, he replied. Go back and lie down. And now this is an interesting verse, verse 7. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord because the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Once again, the third time the Lord called Samuel, he got up, went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. And then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the boy. He told Samuel, go and lie down. If he calls you, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came, stood there, and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel responded, speak, your servant is listening. Amen. Praise the Lord for his holy and righteous word that is already blessed. Good evening, Sister Sheila. God bless you, Sister Vaughn. God bless you, Sister Gail Robinson. Good evening to all of you. <clears throat> and so we began talking about how God used Eli to help Samuel to understand. Uh, it's an interesting read as we cover this passage several times now and we understand uh, uh, the uniqueness of this calling for Samuel into uh, the prophetic and the priestly. <clears throat> and so we said and we learned thus far, amen. Good evening, Pastor Philip Davis. God bless you, my brother. Appreciate you. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, we've learned 12 ways, well, we've learned 10 of the 12 ways to listen for God's voice. Number one, we must listen quietly. We must listen quietly. Okay, Uwasu uh, Zachariah, all right. Um, I am not understanding. I see I am a great Malam Baba helping people to overcome their problems. What sapped me right now, okay? All right, I'll, I'll follow up with you, sir. Appreciate you. List where you're from. It appears that you're from Africa. All right, sir. God bless you. Thank you for joining us, sir. 
<clears throat> and so we must learn to listen quietly. Quietness is essential to listening to hear the voice of the Lord. Secondly, we learn we must listen attentively. We must be attentive as we listen for the voice of the Lord. Third, we learn that we must listen expectantly, with expectancy rather, with expectancy. We must listen with expectancy. Uh, the prophet Jeremiah said, call unto me and I will answer thee. So we listen with expectancy for God to answer us. And then we, fourth, we found out we must listen patiently. Be patient, wait patiently on the Lord and he will answer. And then we found out, number five, we must listen dependently. We must listen dependently, depending on the presence of the Holy Spirit within us to help us to understand, to open up our understanding. We can't grieve him or quench him because we depend on him. Amen. All right. God bless you. Well, thank you, Brother Basharan. You said that's a Nigerian phone number. Okay. Uh, Brother Basharan, we know you from, from uh, Africa, Nigeria, so you know that number. Bless your heart. Thank you, Minister Basharan. Um, we appreciate that. Welcome from Nigeria, my brother. We thank God for you. <clears throat> and then number six, we must listen with confidence. We must listen with confidence. And this is an attitude that we come to God knowing that we know God will speak. We're leaning and dependent on the Holy Spirit and we have confidence and we exercise our faith as we come to listen for the voice of God. Seven, we must listen actively. We must listen actively. Uh, that means we've got to get involved in handling the word of God accurately because the word of God is active, it's alive, it's powerful. And we come to it understanding we must let the word do what the word does in the lives and the soul of the believer. And then we must store up the word, treasure it up inside of us. And then we must meditate on the word as we listen actively. Then number eight, we said we must listen carefully. We must listen carefully uh, as we are uh, actively engaging. We're being careful with how we respond because the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, active and alive, as we said earlier. The word will do its work, and it will show us ourselves as, as it shows us who God is and what God is saying. Then number nine, we said we must listen openly. We must listen openly. Be open to what the word of God will do for us. Amen. We not only must hear the word, but we must be doers of the word because we know that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable, all right? It's for reproof, all right? A rebuke, uh, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, right? And so it corrects us and it teaches how to do the right thing. It, it rebukes us and shows us our wrong. And so uh, that's a good thing, but we have to be open to receive that as the Lord speaks to us, because we said, in order to be able to have a, a relevant word, amen, we must be open to receive that word ourselves, amen. We've got to be open to that word, amen. And then number 10, we said we must listen thankfully. We must listen thankfully. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Be thankful, not anxious, not worrying, but grateful and thankful, humble, yes, but thankful because the Lord <clears throat> is sharing with us his word, amen? And we read it in the New Living. It says, don't worry about anything, pray about everything. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank him for what he's already done, amen? Casting all your cares upon him, amen, because he cares for you. And the peace of God will pass all understanding, will keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Be thankful in everything. Amen. And so we talked about that. And then today, we want to pick up with number 11. Number 11. We must listen humbly and respectfully. We must listen humbly and respectfully. We must be humble. We must humble ourselves. Amen. 
humble ourselves. Jesus taught this to his disciples at least three different ways in different times. Matthew 23, verse 12, uh, Luke 14, verse 11, and Luke 18, verse 14. Matthew 23, verse 12, Luke 14, 11, and Luke 18, 14. We find Jesus teaching his disciples three different ways. Hey, Brother Macon Wilson, God bless you, man. Thank you for joining our, our time tonight. And so, essentially, he says, um, humble yourselves, uh-huh, and, and, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. But he who exalts himself will be humble. And so, in other words, you want to be humble. Amen. God rewards the humble. All right. He gives grace to the humble. And so humility is the practice of Jesus Christ himself. Uh, Philippians chapter uh, four tells us that he humbled himself, came in humility and humbled himself to the point of death, even death on the cross. So humility is an extreme characteristic of the believer, particularly when we come to pray. We must be humble because God is going to have a word that will shine the light on some of our errors that we may have been a little prideful in or we may be errant in or whatever it may be. He wants to bring us clarity. And so we have to be in an humble position. But not only did Jesus teach it, but then his half-brother James taught it in James chapter 4, verse 10 tells us that we need to be humble. Amen. And and due season, the Lord will lift us up. Amen. Uh, it's a season of humility, but it also will be a time of elevation. God will lift you up. And then Peter taught it in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, that we need to humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God, that in due season, he will raise us up. So we have multiple times to help us come humbly and submissively as a servant before God and before God's word as we're listening for the voice of God, all right? And so let's go further because when we come humbly, uh, that word respectfully is also the idea of reverence or reverentially. We come with reverence before God. Uh, and watch this. When you read these verses, each time Jesus said it and the other one said what Jesus said in their own expression, it always came with a promise. All right? If you humble yourself, you will be exalted or you will be lifted up. You will be elevated. There's a promise with being humble. All right? Because when Jesus humbled himself, guess what happened? God exalted him and gave him a name that was above every name. Right? And so, so wherever, wherever there's humility... And whether, where we humble ourselves, we learn what that means, uh, and God will raise us up. That's a promise. So practice humility, because with humility is a, con a, a, a promise that, 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 that confirms your, your life, uh, not being pride, arrogant, or boastful, but humble and reverential before God, and watch this, and to other people. Amen. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, 21, submitting yourselves one to another. And so we've got to learn how to be humble, okay? And when we do that, the lifting up is what God does. We don't have to lift ourselves up. We just let God lift us up because that's what God himself does. So look at it this way. Because of who God is, he's holy, he's sovereign, he's omni-everything, if you will. <laughs> so I don't have to go through all the omni's. He's omni-everything. Uh, he's righteous, he's faithful, he's loving, he's merciful and gracious in his being and his doing that we ought to be humble and respectful of his willingness to listen to us while we're fully being, while still fully being responsible for the universe. He's superintending everything else and yet he's willing to listen to what we've got to say in conversation with us. That's some kind of God, y'all. That's marvelous. That's awesome. We said yesterday, he knows everything about us and still chooses us individually and particularly so that while we're talking to him, he's able to be everything we need and do everything that needs to be done in the universe. Man, that's awesome. And so when we come humbly, think about that. He, he has more power. He is all power. 
He has more wisdom. He is all wisdom. Aren't you? And, and, and so he allows us to come to him. But he says the caveat, you got to come humbly. Amen. Come boldly, but come humbly. Don't come in arrogance. Amen. Because what happens to the arrogance? God resists the proud. He resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And so uh, this, is an awesome, this is an awesome thing. God will do that for us. Consider Isaiah 65, 24. And Isaiah 65, 24 is Isaiah's prophecy of the, 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 the kingdom reign. The, some say the millennial reign, the kingdom reign. And this is what will be happening during that time. But there's some principles for us to apply now. It says, <clears throat> and it came to pass that the Lord said that before they call, I have answered. While they're yet speaking, I'm listening or I'm paying attention to them. This is what God says. And so while we come, Jesus taught us this. Jesus said, tell the Lord what's on your heart. And he already knows what you're going to ask. And he knows what you need even before you ask. So before you call, since he knows and you start calling on that which you need or that which you want to express from your heart, he's already answered. But while you're still praying, he's yet hearing. He's yet paying attention. Amen. Not because he answered, he goes away and does something else. No, 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 no. He's still listening, even though he's already answered. Oh, my God. That's a powerful re reality. I wish to God I could learn to be like that. I'm going to tell you right now, I, I, I'm guilty. I confess. I repent. I, I need to be more like that. Amen. Uh, some people, once you've already done the deed for them, hey, I've already done it. You know, go about your business. No, no. The Lord says, I've already answered, but he's still listening <laughs> to us after he's already sent to answer. Oh, that's, a, that's an awesome God, y'all. I don't know about you, but that, that excites me and, and really humbles me. Uh, it convicts me because sometimes it's like, okay, we've done that. Go on, go about your business now. I've already taken care of that, <laughs> right? Sometimes we're like that as parents, you know. We already responded to our kids, did what they want us to do, da, 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 da. Now go on about your way. Go play somewhere, right? <laughs> Not God. Not God, no. Before you call, I've answered. But why are you still speaking to me? I'm listening. I've already solved your problem. You just haven't re realized it yet. And I'm still listening to you. <laughs> Isn't that something? Ah, uh, remember expectation. Call on me and I will answer thee. And so I used to hear growing up, it happens after prayer. It happens while praying. And this text also says it happens before you pray. That's why it's power in praying through. That is praying through a pandemic, praying through COVID-19, praying through. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, Brother Anthony Claude. Good evening to you, sir. Thank you for joining us, Trustee Claude. We got to pray through these difficulties. Hey, Brother Larry Nicholson, Vidal Underwood, God bless you all. Pray through. Evangelist Karen Hitchcock, God bless you. Sister Lynn Bradley, God bless you. Pray through these difficult days and times, all right? And so <clears throat> this prophetic teaching helps us to understand that the condition that we are looking for is what Peter talks about, the new heaven and the new earth. This is the condition that will be happening in that day and time, but it is already, watch this, in, it's wrapped up in eternal life. So we are saved eternally, and we are already designed spiritually for the new heaven and the new earth. So now we must, watch this, we must focus our, watch this, our minds on our position and not our condition. Our position is in Christ seated with Christ in the heavenlies. Amen. God bless you, Sister Lynn Brown. Sister Marion Price says, good evening, Ebenezer. Good evening to you, Sister Marion Price. Bless your heart. Good to hear you, hear you, hear about from you, and I trust all is well. I've been trying to reach you, dear. Amen. God bless you. And so we thank, thank God for you. Uh, and so uh, we already have eternal life in Christ, and we are already, watch this, we already have our wardrobe for uh, eternal life in the new heavens and the new earth. We already have, we already have that reservation, if you will. We're now in our condition, just passing through here on our way home. But until we get there, let's focus not from our condition, but from our position in Christ and look at the word. That's why we've got to learn to be still. 
to see how Jesus would do it, to see what Jesus has already said, to see what God is doing now in this new time. And we're in a new time. We're in a new phase of life, y'all. It will not but return to normal. Oh, no, that day is gone. We're in a new day. The whole world has been shaken by this thing. And so that's a new position that we have. <clears throat> and, then, and then he teaches us to stay in alignment with his word when we're humble and respectful. Because when we do that, we get our prayer fulfillment from our Heavenly Father. Amen. Lastly, we must listen obediently. We must listen obediently. All that we've said up to now is dumped into this one truth. If we're going to listen for the voice of God, then we've got to be ready to obey when God speaks. Twelve ways, all eleven ways funnel right into this last one. Listening obediently. In other words, whatever the Lord says, there ought to be a yes, Lord. <laughs> when you're listening, whatever the Lord says, there ought to be a yes, Lord. We're listening obediently. There will be times when we will hear his voice. <clears throat> we will not like what we hear. It will cause us to have reactions that we've already talked about. It'll challenge our flesh. It'll challenge our nature. It'll stretch our faith right? It'll do things uh, and we won't like it, all right? It causes us to have reactions, um, uh, <clears throat> but God knows us. He knows our making. He knows exactly uh, how we will respond. He, he knows our frame. He knows we are dust, the, uh, the psalmist says. Uh, watch this. But God suffers himself. Watch this, y'all. He suffers himself to be grieved by us because he knows what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he does not change what he said. Lord have mercy. Listen to this one carefully. God doesn't change what he says. And even we'll come to him and keep asking and keep asking. He doesn't change his words. God doesn't change what he says. He patiently changes us. Mm. He's patiently changing us. The answer is then up to us based on our obedience to what he says or has said. When we ask of God and he answers us, but we don't accept it, the answer doesn't change no matter how much praying, fasting we do. However, God will allow us to experience our desires along with the consequences that he was protecting us from or keeping back from us. Y'all hear what I just said? It's over there in Psalm 106. They kept asking of God and kept, God was saying, no, 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 no. <clears throat> God didn't change his no to a yes. He just said, okay, let me give you what you've been asking for. And then let me show you the consequences of, of why I kept you from it. And when you read that, they wished that they had never <laughs> kept asking God. Amen. God, it was still a no. It was still a no answer. But he just pulled back, watch this, the hedge of protection and say, do your thing. And when they got into what they wanted to do, it wore them out. See, God, God, God has always said to that certain person, no, that's, he or she's not the one. No, that's not your job. No, that's not it. That's not the deal. That's not the, and, and, and he keeps telling us no, no, no. And after a certain point, God stops speaking <laughs> and allows us to go experience what he's been trying to keep us from or keep from us. And then once we learn what it was, we appreciate. Sometimes we go and get our own experience, but I, I declare uh, experience is Equal as much experience if I get it from somebody else as opposed to getting it for myself. <laughs> amen. Experience is experience. Uh, amen. If somebody's already gone through 30 miles of muddy water, hey, I, hey, I don't have to do that. You tell me how to get, get around 30 miles of muddy water, I'm going to listen to you. You understand. Now, before in my younger days, in my boldness and braveness, I just had to experience everything. But I got wiser <laughs> as I went along. I'm not the wisest uh, 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 or the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I, I got some sense now. Uh, and so he tells us to be obedient to what we hear. 
to be obedient and to listen. All that we've talked about, all 11 now funnel into this one thing, being obedient. My gosh, my time has come and gone. So let me, let me hunk this off and then give us our prayer. Amen. I hope this has been helpful to you. And so God doesn't, doesn't change his answer. He allows us to suffer through. Amen. God will allow us to experience our desires along with the consequence he was protecting or keeping from us. Therefore, we must listen obediently for the voice of God. All 12 ways will get us access to his voice, but they are developing us into maturity and intimacy with God's yes, God's no, and God's not now. God will answer. You will hear his voice, and he will speak a yes, a no, and a not now. Amen, somebody. And we have to be obedient. We have to be humble and respectful. We have to be thankful. We have to be open. We have to be careful. We have to be active. We have to be competent. We have to be dependent. Are you hearing me? We have to be patient. We have to be expectant. We have to be attentive. We have to be quiet. And we will hear the voice of God. May God bless you. May God keep you. We thank God for each and every one of you for joining us on this Wednesday evening as we conclude with 12 ways to listen for God's voice. In summary, uh, we've heard those things, and Samuel uh, executed uh, in this passage of Scripture uh, nine, clearly nine of the twelve that we see uh, in the text. And don't have time, our time is gone, but as you read it, you'll see it as you study it. Uh, verses 4 through uh, 10 show us that, and it's powerful. And primarily verses 8, 9, and 10 uh, take up a lot of those, uh, about five or six or seven of those uh, principles that we were sharing with you in that in that answer. And then a cross-reference would give you some more from the passages when you also study the cross-reference verses that go with that. May God bless you, keep you, is our prayer. We thank God for you. are going to close with a word of prayer, and then we'll continue on for those who are Ebenezer Baptist Church. All of our guests and friends can remain as we go into our Bible study. Heavenly Father, we are grateful and we thank you for the privilege to share encouraging words for discouraging times to my sisters and my brothers in the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you would continue to grow us stronger in you and draw us nearer to you. We humble ourselves before your mighty hand and we wait patiently to hear your voice, to instruct us, to guide us and to direct us. Lord, Lift us up to the place that we belong, where we can be with you in one accord, alignment with our assignment. And so, Lord, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, and we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your peace that passes all understanding. Minister now into the lives of my brothers and sisters. Shine the light on them and in them. Open them up to new levels of understanding, a new reality. Guide them into new directions and new opportunities. And minister in every way. Provide for them whatever they stand in need of, their families, their friends. Uh, God, just use them in their ministry, their calling, their labor of love. Whatever it is, keep your hand up on them, God. And we'll be so careful to give you all the praises, all the honor, all the glory. We continue to pray victory over this pandemic, and we thank you in advance for how you would bring it to an end in a victorious way that when we get out of this thing, we'll be better because of our experience going through it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. God bless you. May God keep you. Uh, we greet you. Sister Hill greets you. She's thanking God for you. We appreciate that. We thank God for all of you who've joined us each and every night. And we want you to be encouraged because we know great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There's no God like our God. Amen. And if you hang on for a second, we're going to break open a Bible study passage. 
Uh, I'm going to expound on the power of change in just a minute. The power of change in just a minute. Uh, for those of you who want to continue on with us, amen. Bless God for you. <clears throat> and so, those of you who are still with us, thank God for our guest. Uh, those guests who joined us uh, on Facebook, and you still with us, God bless you. Hey, Dr. Moulton, God bless you, Brother Anthony, appreciate you. Hey, Sister Brenda Anderson, thank you for joining us. And Lene Palmer, Pastor Tyrone Charleston, God bless you, my friend and brother. Hey, Brother Thurman King, to all of you who joined us. We're now moving on into our Bible study time. Let's move into our Bible study time. I want to call your attention to a uh, passage of scripture that I was doing my daily devotional time in. And it, it, it probed a thought. It probed a real thought. So I want to uh, uh, finish that thought up with you guys tonight. And I pray that you be blessed by it because it is a powerful passage of Scripture. Second Peter. Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1. I know we had started Bible study in this time. Uh, Sunday school, one of our Sunday school classes uh, 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 topical uh, studies and it's second Peter chapter 1 and it's verses 3 through <clears throat> uh, 9 verses 3 through 9 and we want to we want to lift that up for your hearing and it says um, father bless our time open our eyes to behold wondrous things from your word as we do Bible study tonight to encourage the body of Christ of Ebenezer Baptist Church as we grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And to him be glory both now and forever. Amen and amen. So we, we want to share some things with you. Um, it says, his divine power has given us everything required for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. By these, he has given us very great and precious promises so that through them you may share in the divine nature, escaping the corruption that is in the world because of evil desire. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with goodness, goodness with knowledge, knowledge with self-control, self-control with endurance, endurance with godliness, godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being useless or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. The person who lacks these things is blind and short-sighted and has forgotten the cleansing from his past sins. Hallelujah. Therefore, brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election, because if you do these things, you will never stumble. Amen. Amen. And so I want to talk to you about the power of change from this passage of scripture, because it speaks of uh, the, the, the dynamics for Christian growth. And we're going we're gonna to piggyback on that tomorrow, uh, back in our, our, our topic. It's a two-part data devotional, uh, uh, but I wanted to share uh, some of the background work uh, as a Bible study piece because I don't get to go re really in depth on the daily devotion. I just kind of give the outline and, and allow for you all to pray and put the meat on the bones. I want to put some 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 tendons and some muscles uh, and some tissue on this on this skeletal piece and talk about the power of change because once we understand what God has given to us, we will appreciate this power of change. We here have, if you will, the dynamics for Christian growth in faith. It's the dynamics for Christian growth in faith, but what you need to understand, the dynamic is really the change. It is the change. Once we get saved, you've got to understand what he's done. You, you, he's, he's changing us. We, knew, we know that uh, doctrinally that's called sanctification. He's already changed us through justification. We've been saved. Saved from our past sins, right? It's being saved from our present sin. And we will be saved from future sins, all right? Amen. 
<clears throat> one day we'll be saved totally from all manner of sin. And, and so that's glorification. So it's justification, sanctification, and glorification. So once that happened, that's a done deal. Salvation is past tense. Amen. Jesus died once and for all. And so once we get saved, that salvation is a past tense, but it still has an ongoing occurrence. That's called sanctification. And it happens because of change. Somebody say change. You got to say change. Write change in the comment box. You can go ahead and say it. We've got to say change. Somebody say change. The power of change. Once we have that, amen, thank you. Once we have that, it continues to move us growing upward. Are you listening to me? And so because of his divine power, he has given us dynamics from that word dunamis, uh, which means uh, explosive power. Dynamite is explosive power. Amen. But then you also have dynamics, which is, watch this, it is means of this power. Amen. You have certain dynamics about you that you use some certain power with your gifts, your ability, your attributes, if you will. And then you have a dynamo. That's who you are. Watch this. When you allow the dynamics to be infused by the dynamite. In other words, the dunamis is what makes you a, watch this, a trilogy of power. Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm trying to help somebody. You cannot stay the same when you receive salvation into your heart, into your soul. Amen. The old revival uh, illustration I shared with Ebenezer several times is this. Remember, uh, the pastor had finished preaching a, a sermon on salvation, and he had given invitation, and he invited people to receive Jesus into their heart. This nine-year-old boy comes down, and he says, Pastor, I got, I got, got a question. I, I got kind of confused. He said, to be saved, you said I have to receive Jesus into my heart? He said, yes, son. You have to receive Jesus into your heart. He said, and so if I receive Jesus into my heart, then I'll be saved? He said, yes, sir, that, that's right. Yes, son. And he said, well, Pastor, uh, uh, Jesus, uh, wasn't he a grown man? Pastor said, yeah, Jesus was 33 years old when he died and was buried and rose again. He said, okay, Pastor. Well, see, uh, I'm, I'm nine. And, and if I receive Jesus into my heart, uh, won't he stick out? <laughs> yes, he will, son. The pastor said with a big Cheshire smile. Yes, he will. So when we receive him, it will no longer be you that ought to be being seen. You get my point? It ought to be Jesus who's being seen. And so he put his dynamic power into you and has given us everything required for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence or virtue. All right? And then by these, he has given us every great and precious promise. One translation said, magnificent and precious promises, so that through them you may share in the divine nature. Now, check this out, y'all. God has done something for us that change becomes the norm. See, when people resist change, that's abnormal for the believer. <laughs> change is what becomes our norm. It's the power of change that causes our life to move from where we are to where God wants us to be. It's a part of our assignment. It's a part of our calling. And his choosing us, he called us, then he chose us. That's why we have to confirm that and make sure we know this. But let me talk about some practical elements of change that I've dealt with a little bit this morning, verses 4 through uh, 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 7. Listen, uh, 5 through 7, rather. Listen to verse 5. Verse 5, he says, for this very reason, speaking of verses 3 through 4, for this very reason, make every effort. There it is right there. Who has to make the effort? We do. We have to make the effort to supplement our faith with stuff. Amen. We have to supplement. In other words, we've got the power inside of us. We've got to supply. We've got to supply. We've got to supply. And so he says, supply, watch this, y'all, supply your faith with goodness. Do good, do the right thing. And goodness with knowledge. Study to show yourself approved. Have knowledge, that's gnosis or epigenosis, which means to fully know, 
and to know by experience, okay? And then he says to uh, supply to your knowledge self-control, which means who's in control of you? Who's in control of what you do and what you say, all right? And that's a process. You got to watch that tongue. You got to watch those motives. You got to watch what you say. You got to watch that knee-jerk reaction, right? There's a lot of things that we've got to do, all right, because change is normal. When it comes to being saved, That's we we are changed. You know, it's not just to say the song, a wonderful change that's come over. It's, it's a wonderful changing, <laughs> if you meant. Are you listening to me? And so, yeah, that's right, brother. That's right, brother Carlton. That's right. Power of change is a normal for the believers. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Uh, and so I want you to appreciate that. Appreciate this. Appre appre appreciate it, y'all. That he says, then with this self-control, you have endurance. This is the difficult part right here because that's the word patience and endurance, perseverance. And you know what comes when you when you ask for patience and endurance. Y'all y'all know what comes. Persecution comes with that. <laughs> and, and, and we really don't want to have persecution we still have peace, but persecution comes uh, to help us to exercise that peace and, and demonstrate that endurance, amen, through the midst of it all. That, that's painful. That's problematic. But, y'all, it's a benefit. It's a blessing. That's the power of change. And, and then, watch this, and then with this endurance, give some godliness. That means you need to understand what it means to be godly. Amen. He, he, he's given us a partnership, if you will. We are partakers. Amen. We collaborate. We co we're co laborers. We, we collaborate with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And doing the things of the divine. Remember, we are, we are divine human beings. Amen. We have divinity inside our humanity. There's treasure in the clay pot, there's treasure in the urban. I mean, the earthen vessel. I heard one preacher say uh, some 20 years ago, there's treasure in the trash <laughs> uh, because the clay pot uh, was a, uh, at, with that, that defining it was kind of an inferior material that when held up to the light, it could show it fractures and flaws and, and people would tell if it was really worth something. And most of the time, the best stuff, the most expensive stuff was put way back at the back and the stuff that they wanted to sell, which basically was really worth nothing, but you get a lot of money for it. You know what I'm saying? They put that out front. But unless you knew how to tell what was real and what was authentic by putting a light inside of it, amen, amen. And so, so anyway, that's another piece. Uh, but, but, but the whole notion here is, watch this, saints, that you have to show godliness, amen. Mm-hmm. And then with godliness, brotherly affection. That's the phileo. And then with this brotherly affection, love. So phileo with agape. Amen. Now watch this. Here's where I want to get you. Encourage. For if you possess these qualities, that Greek word, if there could be translated since, uh, since you possess these qualities, or if you possess these qualities, in increasing measure. That means they're expanding, they're increasing. That, that right there says they're changing. Amen. They're changing. And I want to drop anchor here. Increasing measure. They will keep you from being used. If you learn to go through changes, you will not be useless and unfruitful. You will be useful and fruitful. You see that there, y'all? Here's the power. And what are some signs? What are some practical applications that we can, we can talk about being useful and fruitful? All right? There's a lot of things you can talk about. I gave seven key changes. They're really, they're really more than that, but seven common denominators. One of the things is our attitude will change. <laughs> our attitude will change, right? We'll stop complaining about stuff. We'll have a change of attitude. We Complaint won't even be a part of our uh, uh, attitude anymore B because we know what uh, Philippians 2.14 tells us. <laughs> we, 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 won't, we won't be having an attitude of complaining. If, 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 or since, since, right? You see that? Uh, look at that verse again, verse 8. 
uh, my translation says, for if you possess, or since you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being useless or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord have mercy. The person who lacks these things is blind and short-sighted and has forgotten the cleansing from his or her past sin. So watch this. You've been cleansed from all your past sins. Past, come on, present, and future sins. But, but if you're still complaining and if you're still acting like you were, you done forgot who you are. <laughs> See, embrace the power of change. Look for ways to change. Look for ways to increase and expand. God won't, see, we get comfortable mm -hmm, uh, and because we've already done so much with our lives. We haven't scratched the surface. When you go over there and read for, uh, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9, y'all don't, we haven't, we don't know all the things God has in store for us. I have not seen, neither ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of humanity, what God has in store for those who love him. You love the Lord? You don't have a clue as to what God has in store for you. But you won't find out if you're not willing to live a normal life of change. <laughs> Amen. That, that, that's why, That's why. you know, I marvel at it. I know most people, they struggle with it. I marvel at it, but most people struggle with that. They don't want to deal with change. They don't want to handle the power of change in their life. They, they, they don't want to handle that. They don't want to deal with that. They, they move on from that. Amen? Watch this, y'all. Watch this. Stay with me here. So your attitude will change. You won't, you won't complain anymore. But watch this. When it comes to people relationship, people who stir your compassion, mm -hmm, people who move you, mm-hmm, they are a clue to who you are to minister to. The people who stir your compassion, uh-huh, they, they are the people that you assign to. Remember Jesus? When Jesus saw the multitude as sheep without a shepherd, the Bible says, and he was moved with compassion from that Greek word, which means seismo, where we get our, our word seismic meter, all right, that measures uh, the shaking or the earthquake level. Right, a seismograph, and, 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 and so, so listen, so listen, y'all. The people who move you, whether it's children, middle age, seniors, handicapped, right, uh, 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 unique skilled people, autism, right, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, people in the medical field, you, you, people in hospitals, people in nursing homes, geriatric, uh, whatever it may be, people who move you or stir your compassion. It's a clue to who you should be serving. Yeah, because he's changing you in your servanthood. You've been called to something. He's chosen you for something. And then check this out. What stirs your passion is a clue to your assignment. Mm -hmm. may not necessarily be people, but people will be attached to it. It might be mathematics. It might be science. It, it, it might be sports, whatever it is. Uh, teaching kids how to play sports pro pro appropriately, right? Lifetime sports, team sports, whatever it may be. That may, You may need to be a PE teacher, K through 12, like I was. <laughs> learning how to teach individual sports and development, team sports and development and lifetime sports for those who are in high school. So you can learn how to play tennis or golf or you can learn how to ride your bike or swim or you can learn how to do aerobics or dance. These things you can do for the rest of your life. Go bowling, right? You can do these things or you could organize people to teach them how to play uh, softball or baseball, uh, dodgeball or kickball, all these as a team sport, teach them how to run track, play hockey, right? All of these things that, uh, that you can do as a team, uh, volleyball, right? All of these things that you learn how to do as a team in middle school and then ultimately in high school, you learn how to do as a team. Why? Because in life, you're going to have to learn how to work with folk, okay? But there's some things you can do for the rest of your life as you get older, that doesn't necessarily require you being on a team. 
like golf, tennis, right? Swimming, right? Riding your bike, rowing, canoeing, right? So see these things you can learn because watch this, you're always gonna be needing to do something to stay healthy, right? Come on and talk back after me if you can. <laughs> I just want to be encouraging. I just want to be helpful because the power of change in that dynamic that you can watch this, help somebody from your passion, help somebody with your compassion, right? Check this out. What you make happen for others in their life, God will make happen for you. Notice all those things that you do, those different directions that you go, right? Yeah, and you show brotherly love. Huh? Yeah. So you're showing love in that. With love. Right? What you make happen in the lives of others, God will make happen to you. Here it is. Do unto others as you would have them do to you. Give and it shall be given to you. Right? Check this one out. He who gives to the poor lends to the Lord and the Lord will repay. Proverbs uh, uh, nineteen seventeen. I believe that's right. Or oh, 1719. It's, it's twisted. It's one of those. Uh, but I believe it's 1719. He who gives to the poor lends to the Lord, and the Lord himself will repay. See, so whatever you make happen in the life of others, God will make happen in your life. Okay? How about this one? If you want something you've never had, you've got to do something you've never done. If you're attempting to do something, that you've never had before in life, you got to do something that you've never done before in life. Right? If it's a new achievement, that means it's going to be new methods, a new process, and you have to surrender to the process. You can't get new stuff with old methods. <laughs> you, it's just not going to happen. That's not change. That's not change. You, you understand? And everything I said requires a disposition of change. It's a disposition of change. Check this one out. If you want somebody to come to know, thank you so much, 1970, Proverbs 1970. Thank you for that helps, my sister. I appreciate that. Proverbs 1970. You're welcome. Thank you. Watch this. When you, when you surrender yourself and you give yourself to being open and willing to hear from God, you, he will open a door for you to walk through. The issue is, will you make up in your mind that once you cross through the threshold, you go over the threshold, that you all in. <laughs> you can't have one foot on the outside and the other foot on the inside and say, I'm going to be safe right here. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. That, that, that's not going to happen. So you have to be all in. Amen. When you when you diving off the diving board, it's not I'm going to stay halfway on the diving board. No, you're either going all in the water or you're not. All right. You, you can't halfway decide to dive or you're going to have a belly flop splash. So, so, so my point is change in Christianity is developed on your mentality, your spirituality, and your faith. He starts with faith and says faith will take you all the way up. And, and as you begin with faith, from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So, so, so watch this. Everything I've said, verse 9, the person who lacks these things, in other words, they're, they're not trying to increase, they're not trying to develop and change. They're living as if they're blind or short-sighted and having forgotten all that God has done in their life. I didn't say that that's the Bible right there, y'all. If God has done great things for you, watch this, then don't you think you ought to be able to tell others how God has cleansed you from your past sins, how God has delivered you from your past sins? That's called telling your testimony. You know what we call telling your testimony? We call it sharing your faith. You know what else we call sharing your faith? We call that witnessing. And, and But if you mention the word witness, folk tighten up. They just get all tense. Why? Why? That's the part of your change. That's a part of what you're supposed to do. All right? See, see, that's right, brother. Jesus, take all of us or me. Take us all. See, see, here's the reality. 
we are assigned to somebody to tell our story. We are assigned to somebody to witness to. And by our witness, we don't know who it is that our witness will turn around. We don't know. We are partakers of the divine nature so that people can be one to the Lord Jesus Christ. People can be reconciled to God. People can be changed. People can be saved. People can be healed. People can be delivered. People can be set free. People can be loved. People can be fed. They can be clothed. They can, you understand? When we exercise and we tend to do more of the tangible stuff like giving food, shelter, clothing, all of that good stuff, and that's all good. But the most important thing is to make sure their soul is saved. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And what, what, what does it mean if we feed them and we give them clothes and we give them uh, shelter, but they still don't know the Lord? They still a shell of a person. And so, and so the dynamics of change is, my brother, says that we go another further, if you will. What is it? Therefore, brothers and sisters, make every effort. Here it is again. Make every effort. Who makes the effort? We make the effort. Beginning in verse 7. I mean, beginning in verse 5, make the effort. And then beginning in verse 10, we make the effort to confirm your calling and election. Because if you do these things, you will never stumble. So if we don't do these things, we're going to stumble. All right. But if we do these things, we have a promise. We have a great promise. And so there's power. There's power in our assignment. There's power in our change. There's power in our growth. There's power for the change. There's power in the change. There's power through the change. There's power changing you, you see. And so we, that's right, Brother Bramble, you're right. We're assigned to some lost soul to lead them to drink from the water of life. Absolutely. Jesus paid it all, and all to him we owe. If you agree with that, somebody say amen. I God bless you. I see you, Minister Thomas. God bless you. Amen. Amen. And so when we say yes to him, he makes the difference in our life. And so uh, the goal is to pray not only for change for you, but to pray for change in the lives of others. And then as you're praying for change in the lives of others, then you go be the change that you're praying about. Help me, Holy Ghost. Did y'all hear that? Uh, we, I used to come up hearing from my football coach, uh, 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 Coach Hurt. He would say, man, you got to be the change that you want to see. If you want your team to become a, a championship team, then you got to be the change. If we're not champions now, then you got to become the change that will make you the championship team you want to be. Now, in college, we didn't win the championship, but we did start winning more games. You see, because he started working in our mindset. Can I tell you, saints of God, there's power in change. There's power for change. There's the power of change, which means change possesses a power. The word of means possession. The power of change. See, if you are willing to change, you'll receive that power. You experience that power. And every time you'll find something happening in your life, your tongue will be controlled. Amen. It will. It, it, it may not happen overnight, but it will start getting control. Your disposition will change. It will happen. You can discern the enemy. You, you know as soon as you messed up, you confess up, you fall short, you know how to pray and repent. You know how to do those things because the power that you partake, that you participate in as a believer. And then you want to pass on. You want to pass it along. And so I just say this to encourage us because we're going through a change right now. Would you, wouldn't you consider going through this pandemic a change? Yeah, we are going through a change. And there's power for those who understand that change is normal for the believer. But we, if we still resist in change, that means somebody else is in control. If we're still resisting change, that means somebody else is in control. 
Sanctification is the process of change. That's normal for the believer. It ought not to be new for us. See, if you're changing for the better, that ought to be celebrated. It's not just change for change's sake. No, it's change for a purpose. Who you used to be, you no longer are at salvation. And who you were 10 years ago, you ought not be the same person. In fact, who you were last year, you ought not to be the same person. Because sanctification is a day-by-day -day process, you see. And so the more you pray, the more you read, the more you study, the more you converse, the more you fellowship, the more you give, the more you forgive. The more you pray globally, the more you pray locally, the more you pray nationally, regionally, the more you get involved with, with uh, uh, serving people, amen, and, and listening to the voice of God and hearing his voice and doing what he says, amen. You remember what he says to them? <clears throat> he says, uh, now is the time, now is the day of salvation. But what did he say before that? He says, do not harden your hearts. If you hear my voice, hear me? Amen. That's right. I heard you. That's right. So, 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 so there are going to be some things that bring change. You're not ready to change. I got that. But sanctification, salvation is change. So once you get the change and you don't stop changing and somehow people either misunderstand it or never have experienced the change. Okay? Because you can't just get saved and say, that's it. Well, if that's all God wanted for you, once you got saved, he was taking you on to heaven. But he left you here for a reason because he's wanting to change some stuff in you that you can help bring a change to somebody. So I'm going to ask you this question. When is the last time God has challenged you with a change and then you made the change and then you saw what your assignment was to go help somebody else? God doesn't change you just for you. Oh, he changes you for somebody else. Amen. You need to change in the process, but the change is for somebody else. Amen, somebody. And so, and Amen. so, and so, uh, I encourage you, um, as my time has come to an end, I encourage you, saints and friends, to, to consider the power of change. This passage is, is pregnant, a lot of uh, phrases and nuances that I could have unpacked, uh, particularly uh, the increasing measure. That's the change I wanted to keep talking about, but uh, that's your measurement. Change <laughs> is your measurement. You, you understand what I'm saying? When you're That's how you know you are growing in grace in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, because he comes back and uses that same phrase, in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, as the very last verse in this epistle. But grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The fruitfulness is your measurement. Your usefulness is your measurement. All right? So if you are unfruitful, which means there's no spiritual growth or maturity, and you haven't won anybody to Christ, there's a problem somewhere. There's a dead cat on the line, as they say down south. Uh-huh. Yeah, because at least you ought to have pointed somebody to Christ brought somebody to Christ, led somebody to Christ in prayer. Why? Listen, it's not hard to do. Satan going to bombard you. You can pray with somebody on the phone. You can do Facebook salvation, right? You can, you can, you can do that with your grandchildren. You can do that with your cousins, your, your, your relatives, people who know, know that you've changed. They've even said, you've changed. You're different. By virtue of their acknowledging that, that is your greatest way in. That is your great testimony. They knew who you were before. Now all you do is tell them how you became who you are now. Right? You can do that. Absolutely you can. And, and that's the power that God has assigned to you. And you can walk them through this great power and presence uh, uh, of the change that God has given to your life. Well, Saints, I thank you for, for uh, allowing me to unpack that some more because uh, and we may even deal with it uh, uh, some more later on because there, there are at least 21 things that you can pragmatically look and see in your life <laughs> according to the Bible. All right? You, you'll have an urge to pray. You'll have a desire, hunger and thirst. You'll have a desire to study the Bible. You'll desire to send some... I mean, it's a whole lot of other things that we could talk about 
But in the immediate application that you can find in this passage here, yeah, your attitude change. Your eyes open up to reality. You're moving from one place to another. You're progressing. You have measurement. Your soul is stirred. You have the power inside of you. You have the Christ dynamic. And what you do for others, God bless you with because of the brotherhood of the belief. I mean, it's all there. And so I just want to encourage you to, to reflect, reread, uh, um, even rewrite it out. You know, write it out. It helps you to internalize it. Take this stairway in salvation, if you will. Climb this stairway into Christian growth. Verse 5 through uh, 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 8. And then remember verse 9. Amen? Because it's important. That's how you appreciate the dynamics and the power of change. Father, we thank you for this time of Bible study, brothers and sisters of the Ebenezer Baptist Church and others who remain on the conference call line and on Facebook. We ask that you bless them, give them peace that pass all understanding, keep their hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. As we continue day by day, we pray for the leaders of our country. We pray for the leaders in our states. Pray for the leaders in our cities. We pray for leaders on other continents around the world. This world has been affected by this pandemic, novel coronavirus, COVID-19. And we know that you are superintending the universe. You know what's going on. So help us to be still and know that you are God and increase in our knowledge of you, that we might make our contribution, whatever part that you have for us to play, that we would make our contribution to help us in trying and challenging times. Thank you for loving us so much that you gave us your son, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for loving us so much that you gave your life for us. And we thank you that you love us so much that you gave us the Holy Spirit to remain with us and to guide us and to direct us and to comfort us and to convict us and to confirm us so that as we do your will, we bring glory and honor to you. Have thine own way, Lord, is my prayer in the lives of my sisters and my brothers. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you. May God keep you. Thank you for hanging on with us as we kept going through uh, the word of God, amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Keep me in prayer. If you can, join us tomorrow. Uh, pray for me as we do daily devotional Bible class part two as we look at uh, this same passage of scripture and we're going to look at these dynamics in three uh, more unique ways. God bless you. May God keep you. May his peace be with you until we meet again. Take care. I love you. And we appreciate all the love, the prayers, the cards, the support. We love you all. One, one. Appreciate you all. Take care, y'all. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye.